Chapter 6, Lesson 1, Ratios and Rates. So we're moving on to a new chapter, and now we're going to be discussing something that you use every day. When you compare something, like when you have a sandwich, you have two pieces of bread to, your, uh, to whatever there is of meat or cheese, um, and how much lettuce you put on a sandwich is a ratio, it's a, it's, it's a rate, it's a proportion. Uh, and so all those things we're going to be dealing with. So let's start the conversation. So a ratio uses division to compare two quantities. A ratio may be written in fraction form using the word two or using a colon. We're going to get to that in just a second. So for example, here we got here in tennis class, you have won 15 out of 24 matches. You have lost nine. Write each ratio, ratio in three ways. So the number of wins to the numbers of losses. Well, I'm going to just write these out quickly. So wins to losses, that one way of writing is going to be 15 wins to 9 losses. Another way of writing is 15 to 9. And again, this is just different ways of representing the same thing. All those mean exactly the same thing. Um, and so and we, if we look here at the number of wins, the number of total matches. Well, let's see, there are 24 matches total, so the number of wins, 15 24, 15 to 24, and then 15 colon 24. Those are all the same thing. Now, if it says you're using the intensity information above, compare the total number of matches to the number of matches lost using the ratio. Uh, write the ratio three different ways. So, in that case here, it's going to be a number of matches lost uh, to the number of matches lost. Uh, total number of matches to the number of matches lost. Now this is an important consideration. Yes, we're going to have 9 and 24 in there, but actually the 9 is going to be on the bottom because it's 2 uh, to that amount. The 2 goes on the bottom. So 24 to 9 is going to be like that. So 24, 9, 24. That's going to all mean exactly the same thing. And that will be the number of matches uh, to the number of lost using a ratio. And that's different than if we were to do it this way. Because that would be the number of, of losses compared to the number of matches. This, this up here is the number of matches compared to the number of losses. And yes, if you notice, it would be a reciprocal of that there. So if we are asked to order these ratios from least to greatest, probably the easiest way of doing that is to find common denominators. So let's look at that. Now, when I look at these numbers, though, if I were to change them to fractions, that would be one ugly big number that I would have to compare. So in some way, I do this differently. I'm just going to divide the what would be the top number by the bottom number. I'm going to come up with a fraction equivalent for each of these. And I'm going to use my calculator. Now, what I did was I rounded each of these to the thousandth place. And as you can see, the number that is the smallest number is going to be this one right here. Then the second one is going to be, so I'm just going to put that being one. Second smallest number is going to be this one here, and the third smallest number is going to be this one here. So that's how you do that, and again, same sort of plan here. If we were to divide 5 by 12, and then 3 by 5, then 8 by 11, we would end up with, we'd end up with these, if I round it to the hundredths place. And so obviously they're actually already in from least to greatest form. So so this one here would be the smallest, second smallest, third smallest, so in that order. Um, so let's look again. I'm going to move on. Now we're going to start talking about rates. A rate is a special ratio in which the quantities are measured in different units. That's a really important thing here, different units. In a ratio, any units of measure cancel each other out and the ratio can be represented as a simple rational number. Uh, what that means is that if you are comparing the amount of socks that, that John has, John has 10 pairs of socks, and uh, that Jim has 20 pairs of socks, then the ratio is going to be of John's socks to Jim's socks is going to be 20 over 10, which would simplify to 1 over 2. Now, uh, yeah, you can simplify ratios just like with fractions.
Um, and so, but the amount, the unit would be socks, and then that would cancel out. So if we have socks here, so you can see that both of them would be socks, and then actually the units, just like we've talked about before here, uh, for units can cancel out, just like the number 10 cancels out here, and the number 10 cancels out here, and you're left with 1 over 2. So it says here, again, in a rate, the units measured are integral. That means that they are measured in integers. You can write a uh, you can write a rate as a unit rate by writing the equivalent rate with a denominator of one. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, in a rate, we have um, we have them listed in integers. That means that they're whole numbers, and so or that they are numbers that are not fractions or decimals. So here, sixty songs over five hours. So that there, if we were to find the unit rate, what would happen would be is that we would divide both the top and the bottom by 5, and we'd end up with 12 songs per 1 hour. And that would be our actual unit rate, because the one on the bottom, uh, that indicates that it is a unit rate, so 12 songs per hour. Uh, for here, really important to understand that you can actually have unit rates where they actually, um, where the uh, where the numerator is uh, not actually um, not actually a whole number, and I'll show you what I mean by this. If I were to divide both the top and the bottom, uh, no matter what, you just divide by the number that's on the bottom to get to the unit rate. So here I'm going to divide both the top and the bottom by two, because then I will get rid of that two right there, and it will become a one. So if I divide the top by two and the bottom by two, what I'm left with is we got left with 60, I believe it's 67.5 miles per one hour. And when that happens, it ends up that you have your unit rate because we've got that one there. Now, this is really useful in a lot of ways because if you look here, all the time when you go to the store, you're, uh, when you figure out the cost of things, there's things that are in different, uh, different size packaging. Particularly if you go somewhere like Costco or Sam's uh, or something like that with the big warehouses where, where it's hard to determine what, what is the better deal. So figuring out your unit rate is the best thing you can do. So it says here, you pay $3.45 for 15 ounces worth of cereal. What is the cost per ounce? That's the unit rate. So it's going to be $3.45 I know that this is the integer, or this is the actual amount here, and I can do this per 15 ounces. And so I'm just going to divide both the top and the bottom by 15, because that's what uh, that's what will get rid of that 15 on the bottom. I'm going to be left with 0 0.23 dollars per one ounce. So that's how it works. Um, so if we look here, in one hour, four club members assemble 320 letters. What is their assembly rate per person? So it's going to be 320. You do need to list the units. News letters per four I'm just club members. So when I divide the top and bottom by 4, I'm going to end up with 80 newsletters divided by 1 club member. And you really, again, need to list the unit um, to make sure that's clear. Probably this is something that you guys uh, know all the time. It says here, uh, a car is traveling at 60 miles per hour. That is a rate. That's actually a unit rate, though. But the important thing here is that we're, we're actually asking for something different as the question here. What is the rate in feet per second? Okay, that's not what that's listed in. It's listed in 60 miles per hour. So we've got to change this whole thing up. And this is pretty complicated, but I need to change those two units, and we're going to tackle this lesson uh, tomorrow. But I want you to think about how you would change that.